Hello and welcome. You know, at a time when non-metros, tier two and three cities are contributing to India's economic resurgence post the pandemic, we thought of conducting a discussion on the changing consumer behavior and media landscape of the Hindi heart, which is a step further in understanding the consumers from Bharat, India's growth epicenter. And joining me on this panel are Jay Lala, CEO Zenith. Hi, Jay. Hey, hi, hi. Hi, Nita. How are you doing? Great, great. Uh, we also have Rajiv Jain, uh, Vice President Marketing, DS Group. Hi, Rajiv. Hi, Nita. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, and also joining us is Mitesh Desai, uh, Head Sales, Excellence and Agency Partnership at HT Media. Hi, Nita, and thank you very much for bringing this on today. Thank you. <laughs> A big welcome to all of you and hope you're all excited about this discussion. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. So my first question is to you, Jay. Uh, you know, there was a time when advertising on uh, TV and other mass media was largely kept in, uh, made keeping in mind the urban audiences. More spending power, more attuned to newer trends, better accessibility to new and improved products kind of made them an ideal audience for big ticket marketers. But have things changed majorly since the pandemic? So, uh, Nita, uh, what, what I would say is that uh, I, I, I wouldn't just attribute it to the pandemic, but it's, it's been a trend uh, which has been going on for the last uh, probably five, seven years, where uh, the focus is definitely shifting to the Hindi heartland. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, so, so I, again, like India is, is, is basically what we call it as we've divided India into two parts. One is the India, which is the urban India. And second is what we call it as Bharat, you know, the, the mm -hmm. essence of India. A uh, lot, of, lot of marketing spends uh, is being focused now towards Bharat and in between, which is between India and Bharat, where uh, we've, we've not still coined a name for that, uh, mm -hmm. but we call it the Rurban. So okay. uh, that's, that's, that's an area which has been of immense focus. Uh, and it's 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 growing because that's that's where the real uh, next phase of India's growth is going to come. So it's not that urban is all like sort of maxed out. Uh, mm -hmm. Urban continues to to be a growth provider. There is there is huge potential in the urban markets. But uh, now with the accessibility, uh, with with you know earlier it used to be completely media dark, and we used to just talk about things like wall paintings, etc., to reach out to these audiences. Uh, but things have changed. Things have changed with the advent of uh, free TV. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so free dish, and therefore you have uh, uh, TV channels which reach out to them. You have you ob obviously had print which was reaching out, and now with the advent of digital, uh, right. so we've seen the maximum growth which has which has happened in in the digital penetration is within this area. Mm -hmm. So, so it 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 becomes a quite a lucrative market now uh, to to reach out to the consumers there. Okay, and rural India partly cushioned the consumer goods sector, I think, during the first waves. So that's a big plus there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. So obviously, for the FMCG, it was it was a big, big push, uh, and and uh, it 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 continues. So while while we've seen from the urban side, we've seen a huge growth in commerce, uh, mm -hmm. but but uh, uh, our belief is that uh, while commerce will continue to grow and and it's it's a it's a pie out of um, out of a smaller pie but the real large pie is still continues to be the kirana stores and okay. that's where uh, you know the, your, these these the rural markets etc uh, make make a lot of sense okay and let me come to rajiv now in a broader sense of the term and not specific uh, to ds group here uh, do you think india's consumption story is moving from the metros and tier one towns to tier two, three towns now? And what would you say is, are the major drivers for this shift? Uh, <clears throat> see, uh, <clears throat> that's very true that uh, India's story is moving towards that uh, tier two, tier three, and maybe rural areas. I will divide it in uh, three uh, classification, basically. That the towns with the 10 lakh plus population, the okay. towns with one to 10 lakh, and the towns below one lakh. Okay. The penetration uh, in the 10 lakh plus population of any product is odd, already quite high. It doesn't mean that there won't be further growth uh, there. There is a growth definitely there also. The newer segment, the new strategy, we are, we are working it out. But definitely the penetration of any product, the more we go down in the population strata, is mm -hmm. relatively lesser. So definitely it gives more revenues for any marketer 
to push down the products in those areas for the higher growth. The reason the growth drivers uh, for this may be uh, um, various rather. Number one, that uh, disposable income of uh, rural is, and steered, uh, three towns uh, uh, population also increasing. Number two, that uh, digital is also playing a very important role that more and more uh, rural audience, they are adopting uh, digital now. Uh, that the uh, before uh, OTD now is also like heavily penetrated. And before OTD, I will say satellite channel as such was uh, penetrating a lot in the rural area or maybe tier three town. All those things raise the aspiration level of the consumers. When they have the aspiration, when they have the income level also, mm -hmm. and when the companies are reaching to them, in fact. Uh, right. Like they rightly said, that it's not the phenomena during pandemic. Uh, it's, it started before that. But mm -hmm. pandemic further accelerated because during the pandemic, the effect of pandemic was a bit lesser in the rural areas, in fact. So mm -hmm. many marketers focus there also, which gave further uh, push uh, to the products in those areas. Mm -hmm. The bigger problem has been that making the products available in the rural area, the cost is not so is, uh, cheap uh, of distribution in those areas. So mm -hmm. various companies have come up that who are sort of aggregators, that they have been collating the products of the different companies and distributing the rural area. And okay. because of the uh, with the uh, technology, with the digital transparency and all that, the companies also have been able to see where my product is going and all that. So all those things are fueling the uh, uh, growth in the rural areas and uh, pushing the companies to more, more, uh, make them move more towards the uh, uh, areas which, which are less than population one lakh or rural areas. Okay, okay. Let me let me come to the platform side. Uh, HT Media, uh, Mitesh, has properties in print, digital, activations, etc. Hindustan is, of course, a leading Hindi newspaper. But I'm sure you've been observing uh, the consumer very closely. Uh, tell us how has the media consumption habit of the consumer in the Hindi heartland changed? Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks, Neeta, for asking this question. You know, typically what used to happen is, um, you know, previously what India does today as um, um, uh, as uh, Jay put out India versus Bharat, Bharat used to do it tomorrow, right? But mm -hmm. not, not, not anymore, right? What we are seeing is uh, the trends are, are moving on faster and sometimes in parallel. Uh, so it's no longer that um, they are looking at, uh, uh, you know, watching what the metro towns or the India is doing and then replicating it somewhere else. But uh, the trends are moving faster. You know? In terms of media consumption, we are seeing that um, the Hindi heartland is evolving significantly. So on the surface, the trends are largely in line with any major metro. So we are seeing increased adoption of digital platforms, which include digital news, entertainment platforms, as both the panelists have brought out, uh, such as social media. Um, you know, all this is essentially aided by low bandwidth costs and cheaper and more powerful mobile devices. Right today, let's say a smartphone costs around five thousand, uh, roughly, give or take, uh, which is rough, the cheapest smartphone. And we know that the bandwidth costs are uh, increasingly coming down um, and have come down rather and so on and so forth. And what has changed is, uh, you know, the COVID situation has only accelerated the adoption of digital platforms as, as, it, change, as it changes, you know, not only the way uh, people consume media, but also mm -hmm. they bring digital platforms into various walks of life, such as education, shopping, uh, content and entertainment consumption, right? However, what we what we saw was the fundamental need space for news and information of these markets uh, essentially remained the same. And uh, make no mistake that this belt churns out the most number of IS aspirants, engineers in the country, besides mm -hmm. being home to 50% of the population, right? So what we saw was markets like UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, which are which were relatively media dark and therefore print media always played a significant role in mm -hmm. the way Hindi heartland has consumed news and information. The belt was always hungry for high quality news because of their aspiration to be in touch with politics, global news and in general knowledge, as we saw, right? They're like very progressive in their thinking. They really want to crack the IS exams. They really want to crack those engineering exams and so on and so forth. So, so taking cues from that at HT Media, we've kept pace with evolving consumer behaviors and evolved both print and digital uh, platforms with features uh, which are very, uh, you know, intuitive and uh, actually we've been inspired by the way the digital media is consumed, whether the social media or anything else. So, for example, we brought in new features like Pramuk Panch, right, which taps into the snacking behavior of news consumption. So we curate the top five news 
of the day and summarize this on the front page for on the go consumption. We've also introduced QR codes so the newspaper doesn't have to be only the morning affair as um, as new and more information gets filed in, uh, whether it's elections, Ukraine war, uh, et cetera, you know, people are hungry for updates, Abhi kya ho hai, what's happening more. Uh, so, you know, this keeps the uh, the news fresh and, it, and, and so, you know, our newspapers doesn't have to be only a morning affair, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are 30 second news sections on every page. So we said, let's summarize the page into a 30 second section, which mm -hmm. can be read and everybody, anybody who wants to double click can go on further. There are news with links to video content. So video, I think um, um, there is a, there is of course the troika of video, voice, and vernacular. So we've seen how do we adopt that into our product as well. So there is a strong uh, push on video content as well, and and this and 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 you know the way we consume uh, news on uh, WhatsApp or any other um, mm -hmm. messaging platform. So we have also curated shareable info cards. Uh, to to tap into the rising need. So both our product, um, print and digital products are keen, keenly following the consumer behavior and trends and adopting this to suit uh, the, the new consumer behavior. Okay. And um, Rajiv, as a marketer, do you think these kind of innovations is something that's really going to benefit uh, you in the long run uh, in reaching out to the HSM market? Of course, uh, that see nowadays that media is too cluttered. That innovations are very very important. Number mm -hmm. two, the uh, like uh, all the traditional media, they have mm -hmm. to bring in the technology aspect. In fact, nowadays consumer want more personalization, more experiential, at, uh, and more engagement. In fact, mm -hmm. and that is the only way that uh, the traditional media can bring some freshness in the media landscape. And the brands will also like to engage with those kind of uh, innovations and activations and, and all that. And mm -hmm. uh, like uh, what happened that nowadays that uh, people don't want to wait for next day morning, in fact, to pick up the newspaper, to wait for the news because they have got everything uh, like uh, at the right uh, live in kind of news on, on their mobiles and all that, right? Uh, and uh, the detailed news they get on the news platforms and all that. But so morning, till the morning uh, when the newspaper comes, everybody is well fully aware of each and everything. So I think this kind of initiative from uh, in just a time of the QR code, it's quite appreciated in fact, and this will bring the more live news kind of thing. So this uh, our marketers are always looking for some innovative solution in fact, because uh, otherwise that the brand will be lost somewhere in the two cluttered media in fact, and only they know engagement or innovation. And, and you know, increasingly looking at properties which can blend more than one medium together to kind of get the message across, is it? Yeah, integration is always important in fact, because consumer doesn't uh, consume the uh, brand communication in one medium in fact. And if it consumes mm -hmm. only one medium, the amplification may not be too high. If it yeah. consumes on the different media, the amplification is always very high. Because purpose of that media communication is what, the brand communication is what, that purpose is that consumer should be fully engrossed in your messaging and consumer ultimately should lead to some uh, trial, it should lead to some engagement, it should lead to some uh, further at final action impact. So mm -hmm. when there are multiple touch points, uh, when uh, that there is integration of various media, the amplification of message will always be higher. Okay, interesting. Now, I, I'd also like to spend a little more time on, uh, you know, the classification of uh, the profile of the this consumer in the HSM market today. Uh, like, you know, Mitesh said that, you know, they are still the IAS as, uh, IPS aspirants, but I want to get, uh, get an understanding from uh, Jay. Uh, you know, you you are you are an expert who guides advertisers on their spends. Please throw some light on the shifts and aspirations and behavior of consumers in this indie heartland, and how in turn it affects their media consumption. So, uh, I think uh, the first the first factor is uh, when you when you look at this consumer, he he has a little more time in his hands. So, I'm just trying to differentiate between the consumer and the urban uh, versus versus the con consumer uh, from 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 the smaller towns. Uh, mm -hmm. so one is uh, time. Time is of essence. Uh, I, I think that's a big differentiating factor. They 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 have time on their hands as compared to uh, the urban. Uh, there's there's less time spent on commuting. Mm -hmm. So 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 what what happens uh, essentially is that uh, uh, what what we call uh, classically uh, what we call as, as appointment viewing. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm not just restricting this to TV, but I'm just saying anything with an appointment where you have a fixed time to do certain things is, is more a classical feature here in the rural areas uh, rather than in the urban. 
so when when it comes to newspaper there is a certain time to read the newspaper there is there is a larger uh, hours of tv viewing which is happening uh, mm -hmm. consumption of digital is high so even before uh, this entire boom of the internet uh, what what we were seeing is that um, in 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 the in the smaller towns uh, obviously people people didn't have those classy smartphones but uh, there were there were these certain chips which were available which would come preloaded with movies you know you could mm -hmm. purchase it for 10 rupees to 20 rupees and all that and you could get 10 movies at a go and these were all edited movies they would edit the songs etc and all that and th that would be there and that was being consumed largely now what has happened is with the with the rise of short uh, content videos and all that 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 consumption is 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 going high so uh, it one is obviously it it, it differs from state to state uh, from from region to region but the big point is that uh, media plays a very big role mm -hmm. there is, because because there is there is there is time for consumption it's not like what what is happening what we see in the urban is that there is this uh, extreme rise of cord cutters mm -hmm. and, and basically they're not watching tv they're not reading newspapers they're not listening to radio and they're, they're getting to everything which is subscription based mm -hmm. and uh, from an advertising perspective it becomes very very difficult to reach this consumer and uh, this this consumer is also a very high profile consumer so this is where you want to target most of your products it's becoming very very difficult on the other hand we don't have that so when you look at when you when you look at uh, on the rural side it's not subscription based it's more advertising based so it's more advertiser friendly they are they are more willing to look at new products consume more ads and all that so there is a there is a polarization and and that that plays a very important role uh, what what we try and do is uh, depending again from brands to brands uh, there are there are two clear dictates which we try and raise it to our clients one uh, the same communication will not work so what mm -hmm. you're trying to communicate to the urban does not work there you have to customize uh, we are used to you know having a single tvc or a single form of communication which just goes all across so that is something which we are trying to do use use local celebrities use use uh, local stars which are which are more popular amongst the rural areas than urban uh, so that's one the second is that again it depends on brand to brand but there are certain brands where up till now what happens in a classical media planning is that you make a plan for national you know you make a plan for all india and then you start having little inputs for for regional and rural markets uh, our our advice is that the given the way india is given the focus mm -hmm. which it it has india is a very regional market india is absolutely regional and uh, we are trying to like you know in certain cases do what i call it as bottom up planning Okay. You first feed your regional markets. You first feed your rural markets, and then see if there is a need to go uh, from a national select uh, channel, because it's it's so fragmented, and and we are seeing markets like UP now, uh, markets uh, like Maharashtra and all, where there is a lot of inputs which is happening. It's completely differentiated. What works in Bombay does not work in rest of Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. So so these are some of the factors which come in. Uh, all this is uh, keeping consumer at the center. So you look at what the consumer wants and then uh, try and target. So it it is it is quite challenging. It's not easy. It is quite challenging. Uh, but but that's some of the things which we are trying to do. Okay. Interesting. You you mentioned that you know the ads cannot be the same as what is fed to a urban audience. Uh, Mitesh, I'd like to ask you. So you see a lot of ads coming in your paper, the digital, uh, the website, uh, the app. Uh, are the way the marketers reaching out to the uh, audiences in HSM markets is it very different uh, from you know how it is in the urban Indian how they're reaching out to the urban Indian consumer today and even profile wise you know these are people who have very global aspirations I mean at least in the uh, in the thought process and they want to lead a you know a, an urban lifestyle so are we still categorizing them as people who are looking at affordable solutions who may need uh, value for money or they've graduated to people who are splurging heavy yeah, I think India as such is a is a value conscious market, right? Uh, and therefore, um, when we talk about differentiation, it it all depends upon identifying what really matters to the consumers. So, for example, to me, a Netflix at um, um, now they've reduced the cost. I forget, but let's say a six hundred rupees and multi devices may make sense. But uh, you know, for somebody who is value conscious can look at only a single usage, uh, uh, you know, mobile device and pay about 150 rupees, for example, 
for the consumption of content right so it's it's the same proposition uh, or i would say it's the same content which is uh, dissected very differently uh, to appeal to a value conscious consumer uh, versus uh, you, you know uh, versus for example and uh, I, I mean in general india is a value con uh, so it it all depends upon um, uh, what is the need state that a marketeer is addressing mm. and uh, what is the therefore the communication essentially moves in in that direction plus there are so many different uh, uh, i would say uh, uh, so many different variations or um, you know uh, product variations so for example a two wheeler is not just the two wheeler across right a tvs a party probably maybe um uh, maybe uh, uh, very well accepted in the urban markets but then there are different versions where people are seeking more value of mileage more value of, uh, you know cost consciousness etc so you know the communication depends upon the product which is offering and more more often the case there is a differentiation in the product itself uh, which lends to a differentiation in communication so what element of a product needs to be highlighted is very different in the uh, in the hindi markets uh, because the the value that consumers seek is very mm -hmm. different okay now let me ask rajiv now you know ds group is into confectionery beverages food pan masala hotels a lot of things how different is the way you advertise to your rural uh, urban consumers a few years ago as opposed to how you're doing it now and what are the nuances that have changed if at all uh see uh not in ds context i will say in general in fact okay. see uh, that it's very important uh, for any communication that uh, consumer should be able to <coughs> relate with the brand in fact right because ultimately it is a matter of that consumer uh, that what is the objective of uh, any communication mm -hmm. the objective is that we have to create a love for the brand we have to create a loyalty we have to create a sort of trust factor in fact that trust factor comes like when you speak in his language Uh, mm -hmm. as uh, like mutesh said it's a matter of the need state in fact mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, we are addressing to the consumer in fact uh, if the uh, if i have to build a trust factor and see but bias is a general human habit like we are comfortable with the person who speaks our language who speaks as per our culture and our lifestyle and all that mm -hmm. there certain product category is maybe very aspirational kind of thing then definitely that i have to show in in a more urbanized manner in the rural area also so mm -hmm. that aspiration level of rural uh, audience is in enhanced in fact but if the product category is not so aspirational kind of thing it's more mm -hmm. of a more functional uh, product kind of thing and all that so there is a matter of that i have to build a trust in the uh, rural audience that then i have to play with the culture of that uh, consumer and i speak i i have to speak in his language basically so mm -hmm. in sense, as a mobile phone uh, in an urban setting it may mm -hmm. very aspiration kind of thing i have to flash it out and i have to i have to put it on the table there were kind of handset i am carrying and all that in rural where it's very very functional and rural is more of the hindi audience in fact then uh, even the key uh, keyboard will be in hindi in fact <laughs> like various smartphone they have the uh, hindi keyboards mm -hmm. right yeah. uh, similarly like uh, if you remember that campaign from cop of amir khan in fact so when uh, they went to rural area with the 5 rupees bottle in fact many years back maybe i i think i've been to 2020 is back so amir khan has shown a typical like a rural person in fact even the scripting was rural setting in the setting was rural the complete articulation tonality was rural because they have to sell the product at 5 rupees and they have to show that uh, uh, you can relate with the brand like right? it created sort of a uh, trust factor and comfort factor in the rural audience towards the brand in fact mm -hmm. so at time that marketer they have to customize their communication as per the taste and the lifestyle and the behavior of the rural audience at times it may not be required but i feel if the product is aspirational perhaps that urban aspiration level will raise the aspiration in the rural audience also if the product is not too lifestyle and aspiration oriented we have mm -hmm. to just build a trust it's a functional product then definitely you have to see his need state which you are addressing his culture codes his imprints which you are addressing and accordingly you have to tailor made your communication uh mm -hmm. one more thing that rural audience uh, they are slightly like income level is still lower in fact okay. so they believe more in the affordability in fact and they are a bit more conservative in, in experimentation mm -hmm. so many companies uh, they launch the uh, smaller sku pack for the rural audience mm -hmm. for instance sometimes in 80s like kevin care launched shampoo like when the women used to 
use a shiga dry for washing their hairs there were no concept of shampoo in the rural audience mm-hmm. so that time they have to launch sachet so that the trials are generated when the trial generated then the uh, uh, tanjuma immediately jumped to the bigger sp also you mm-hmm. know kum mela that dawar uh, uh, distributed sachets of uh, oromos in fact mm-hmm. just tries consumer rural consumers in fact hindi belt or uh, consumers uh, to try the product in fact so marketer mm-hmm. they have to customize their uh, not only communication their offering their price point their features of the product as per rural audience nice. interesting chick is a beautiful example i think uh, yeah. No, Jay. I'd also like to ask you, but have we overall ditched that urban messaging for the Hindi belt? Are we still going with that, or we moved away from that? No, I, uh, I, I think uh, the the urban messaging, uh, like what, like what I was trying to explain earlier. No, the it, urban messaging, like the typically having the you know when when you have a rural ad, you show a rural setup, you try to appeal to them in a certain form of way. Or when we address the rural audience now, are we looking at them as more global citizens? you know more people who can kind of fit if it in with just the others so so uh, i i think this is this is something what uh, what rajiv just spoke earlier you know so that there are there are two ways so one is trying to make it aspirational and then you mm-hmm. try to you know bring them to to that level uh otherwise uh, it's it's still so i i wouldn't call it a setting or something like that but i would i would more talk about using the same lingo the lingo is quite different when you go down uh, to the rural areas and it, and it differs from from area to area you know so it's 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 uh, that that is a challenge the celebrities are different so when you when you when you're trying to build that local connect the celebrities are are pretty different so uh, in in the communication these things start playing a very important role so how well can you connect with them see finally uh, again the belief is that you know every brand tries to communicate with the consumer to make them feel that i am for you, you know? mm-hmm. and that's that's where i think this makes a huge difference if you are going to communicate in a standard format it might not cut through because most of the creative most of the stuff which we've created till now is more urban you know we 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 been brought brought up in a cert, certain way and we we continue to 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 sort of follow that but this requires a shift and there are a lot of local celebrities which probably we have not even heard them in the urban market we, we we do not even think that they are big in the urban market but they are really big when it comes to rural areas so uh, so that's that's where the localized connect is extremely important uh, so i wouldn't i wouldn't say that you know the communication needs to like always have a rural setting but it's more about having a more connect with the consumer uh, which which is which is the key which is the key to, mm-hmm. to start talking to okay, but are there advertisers today who traditionally focused on urban audiences for decades but over the past few years you've kind of seen them change their strategy dedicate a big chunk of their spends on rural tier 2 3 t- towns no absolutely so uh, again I'll, i'll i'll give an example of uh, of maggie Uh, mm-hmm. which, which is one of our clients uh, so while while they have they have uh, creatives which which cater to basically north india and uh, that's that's uh, that's something which they use uh, pretty proactively but they have made specific communication for for the rural areas so there are there are a lot of challenges which occurs like probably in rural area there there uh, there is uh, what you uh, call um, there are a lot of fakes you know so mm-hmm. for them every yellow pack is a maggi pack Mm-hmm. so how do you change that mindset you know how do you how do you get them to realize that this is what it is while in urban you need not do that you know uh, that's that's some of some of the things which we've taken for granted the second thing is that you know getting getting local connect which i was talking about earlier so maggi uses local celebrities in these areas local mm-hmm. festivities uh, so so that is something which we try and use to bring a connect to this consumer versus trying to just use the uh, the 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 mass advertising uh, creative which we use so while that definitely you can't really sort of segment and dissect it when it comes to tv uh, so mm-hmm. the consumer might see both but there is a creative which goes specifically for that uh, specific location audience so mm-hmm. so that that's what a lot of brands are doing that uh to to sort of cater to it so while you have a national creative which goes across uh but there are specific creatives directed to them okay uh, mitesh uh, you know uh, you doing a fabulous job with your revamp i mean the innovative uh, the innovations that you bringing about is really going to help bridge the gap uh you also if i'm not wrong help create uh ads uh, with advertisers for hsm audiences because you know them best 
you know how how are they uh, you know what are these uh, can you elaborate on how you are doing it and how you catch the pulse of the audience better than the rest uh, so great great question anita in fact um, what we have is actually curating what we call as a mini agency or a communication arm within our own uh, within our own businesses so we have uh, uh, something called as a branch studio uh, mm -hmm. the branch studio essentially uh, you know understands again everything right from um, what the communication is about uh, who are the audiences we do our own primary research dipstick in in the rituals and beliefs of the audiences uh, right so jay brought up very interesting uh, con concept of uh, maggie um, and you know you need to talk about the uh, the fake uh, differentiation of a fake versus original uh, in in certain uh, in certain areas of the country whereas those communication may not uh, be relevant elsewhere so you know understanding those rituals and beliefs uh, and then creating um creating concepts and creating messaging right from ground up um so we've done uh, some great work in um in actually looking at um, uh, democratizing the financial services we've done great work with um the the tabella group with with our uh, uh, web series called the friday finance which is essentially you know identifying rituals beliefs and and blending the core communication within that we've also morphed ourselves from not just a print company but to be able to uh, deliver brand solutions across across the funnel right uh, which is uh, we know that brand today brands today are looking to partner with platforms which give them a full funnel solve right mm -hmm. from creating awareness to building consideration and driving sales and not just one and one media like just a print right can't 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 uh, contribute to all and th therefore it has to be a mix so for example when we are talking about reach and impact a critical elements to drive awareness um mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, and not just overall reach but also reach within relevant brand audience cohorts is important uh, so brands are looking to platforms to get them uh, solves for reaching more accurately to some of the cohorts that they are uh talking about brands are also seeking more accountability by mm -hmm. measuring the awareness lifts uh you know through their reach and impact campaigns so that is something which is uh, which is an additional layer on top of our uh, ability to connect uh and and not just reach right it essentially the whole package that we 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 stitch together so also again when we talk about print versus digital um, at ht we are actually investing significantly in building uh, the customer data platforms what we call a cdps and offer our clients reliable first party audience solutions um to measure brand impact we have partnered with the likes of kantar and nielsen to bring cutting edge brand lift solutions to our clients right um and again we believe uh, connecting with content is critical element of uh, engaging and building consideration for our brand see we were always local right we we know what works in a local geography given our connect with them through our newspapers uh, and we know that brands are looking for local expertise of these media houses to create relevant contextual opportunities and brand integration so for example uh, uh, the hindi heartland is no stranger to large format brand activations like melas on growing mm -hmm. outreach programs such as nukkad natak retail fairs and many more and brands are looking to partner with platforms which uh, enable on ground presence with a one to one dialogue with the consumers uh, mm -hmm. we have something called as an oki club which is a unique platform which we have created that enables brands to to reach out to uh, the progressive women readers and build a one to one connect to drive awareness trials as well as use this platform to interact uh uh with them uh and actually get brand feedback so a lot of stuff that we do and uh, the communication we help uh, build our solutions are very local uh and you know because we know uh the nuances are and, you know while we have several editions uh, of mm -hmm. our papers we have several hundred sub editions which means that you know uh, it's not just a lucknow edition it's a lakhimpur kheri and beyond that what a pilvit edition is essentially you know to understand nuances that because every 100 kilometers you go 
the dialect changes, the, uh, the again, ritual beliefs uh, 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 gradually change. Uh, and we understand that. And that's where we bring those expertise um, with, of course, the element of uh, reach, trust, everything that goes on into the brand. Uh, to to enable uh, our clients reach those uh, their media and brand objectives very well. So you're basically customizing as per the need of that particular advertiser. And also Absolutely, not, not just customer localizing as well. So while the propositions are customized, the the way in which we communicate is fairly, um, you know, localized uh, to what that region or geography understands in the best manner. My next question is to you and Jay. Uh, it's kind of building up uh, from what Jay spoke about. You know, like like Nestle spending a lot of money on urban uh, on rural advertising. Similarly, are we also seeing brands um, which are not traditionally from that space? Maybe like the the new age companies, gaming, OTT platforms, digital payment apps, uh, because of the proliferation of internet, also tapping the urban audience, uh, the rural audiences. I mean, we, we just released this uh, report on, uh, with ESP properties, which, which said that there has been a 200% increase in gaming uh, in small towns. And uh, if they're consumers of gaming, they can also be tapped to as consumers, uh, you know, consumers to advertise to, right? So I want to understand which of these new age brands that are coming uh, and tapping these sketches of markets. Um, Jay, you can go first and then I can come sure. to that, Mitesh. Sure. So uh, I, I, see, it's, it's, it's uh, basically... Um, from a new age perspective, media is, is one which I think has, has really uh, penetrated well in these areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you look at, uh, so one is obviously the payment uh, gateways, payment apps. Uh, this, is, this is something which is gaining momentum. The other one is education. Uh, mm -hmm. Access to, to, to certain, certain amount of education, knowledge. Uh, which was which was not available earlier. It was it was uh, it was a big challenge. So uh, these these are these are some of the things. Uh, uh, financial apps, uh, fintech apps. Uh, these are these are uh, places where where there has been an increased uh, sort of uh, penetration. Uh, and it's 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 uh, the amount of time let's say urban took to grow this. Uh, these markets are growing much much faster. So the adaption of, of let's say, um, uh, digital OTT in India uh, in the urban markets versus the rural, the rural is gaining much faster because the access and everything is, is, is much more ready for them. And even for the marketeers, they've learned, you know, that how, how should we sort of approach these, uh, these, these uh, rural markets. So uh, it's, there, is, there is a growth which is happening. Digitization has, like, like uh, we, we discussed this earlier, what pandemic has done is that it's, it's brought forward 10 years. You know, what we used to think we could do it in the next five years, seven years, 10 years has happened now. It has mm -hmm. forced us to do that, and and that's 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 been one of the key game changers for us, and uh, that's that's what has happened. So, uh, when you when you look at the traditional, yes, FMCG is making a big inroad. Uh, in fact, uh, like the example which I was giving of Maggie, all popular brands are fakes, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's that's something. So when you go there, you suddenly realize there are chocolates being sold, there are colas being sold, and and all other biscuits, everything, but all of them, most of them are fakes. They are trying to capitalize. Somebody has already reached there, you know. So, mm -hmm. so uh, while while we are trying to like you know sort of go and educate the customer, saying that this is right, but he's used to certain things. So similarly, uh, you know, even in the other spaces, that's that's the that's the phenomena. And a lot of apps have been created for uh, these. Like ShareChat is a classic example, mm -hmm. you know, which is which is which is catering to this market. So. Uh, what what Facebook and Google have done to urban India, uh, like ShareChat is trying to do that uh, within within the smaller market. So, it's 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 a great opportunity for brands across. Uh, and and as as we all have agreed and said multiple times, digital has has just accelerated that completely accelerated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would I would add uh, you know fashion and food to it. Um, significant. Uh, uh, adoption of both these categories. We've seen proliferation of influencers and the whole influencer-driven economy, both across fashion and food, um, right? Of course, Jay talked about media, finance, gaming, and education, but I would, I would also add fashion and food to it. Um, and, you know, again, I, I did comment earlier that, you know, the aspirations of this, this, uh, they were aspiring to be the IS leaders of tomorrow, but 
trends are changing. People are looking at becoming influencers as a career option, and that's legit, right? I mean, that's absolutely. People are looking to gaming as a career option as well, and again, that's becoming fairly legit, um, becoming more and more accepted um, within within not just their peers, but also within their family as well, because uh, you know, uh, make no mistake, they are very well influenced by the social circle that they live in. Uh, they still not. I would say nuclear in the way we see urban or metro audiences. They're still impacted more by family. But, um, you know, the, the whole influencer revolution and the whole creator economy uh, that is creating a shift in, in most of these businesses and also accelerating them is, is phenomenal. It's essentially, as I said, you know, we've just uh, accelerated 10 years into the future. Uh, these one and a half years of COVID or two years have just moved us significantly forward fast forward yes absolutely you know let me let me ask rajiv now you know more than a year ago because you talk about covid i mean there was a time when big brands amul pale they pulled back advertising from news channels owing to toxic content then there are digital websites social media which have been accused of spreading fake news motivated news and yet today's high consuming uh, consumer customer is a voracious reader and he wants to be very well informed so what are the platforms that you use to reach out to them, especially in the Hindi-speaking states? I'm talking about news specifically. Uh, see, uh, basically, uh, TV, if I see, uh, the total population is crossing around 900 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, digital, I will say um, 600 million, in fact. So number one, the digital nowadays is no more add-on media, it's more of the rich platform for us. Mm -hmm. Number two, both on digital as well as on TV. That news definitely has played a very important role, in fact. Mm -hmm. But with on television, that news has become very, very popular. But on digital also, that most of the people, they have the news apps and all that. Uh, print has slightly, like, uh, has become down in the last two years, in fact. The digital industry is al already out of uh, print, as I earlier said. Reason being that uh, people uh, don't wait for the morning, uh, next morning to pick up the newspaper. They get the news uh, that day. So mm -hmm. what reader, when you say, then definitely they are reading a lot on digital in fact, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the physical copy and all that. Number mm -hmm. two, time span. That earlier that when we used to pick up the newspaper, we used to spend complete one hour in the reading the newspapers and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, since already we have seen the news, so then there definitely that the uh, time spent on digital is becoming slightly more in fact. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we have to target the news genre in fact, so uh, number one, that nowadays it's no more TV versus digital or something like that. It's more of the complete AV planning fact. Okay. That we will pick up the news on TV also, we will pick up the news on uh, digital also, in fact. Number two, that it will depend on the objective also of my communication. If mm -hmm. the objective is more of the impact, then TV and print also plays very important role. Okay. So I will launch some new consumer offer. I will launch some new packaging. I will launch some new product. Then print is a fantastic medium for me, in fact. In one row that the entire city will know that I will launch something new, in fact. Mm -hmm. But uh, the digital has certain other, other advantages. If I have to go in a certain, certain particular geographical territories, even in, in terms of pin code, in terms of if, 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 uh, small uh, towns also and all that. So digital can take me to that particular town only, which perhaps that print may not give me that flexibility, in fact. Okay. Number two, uh, that in terms of profiling of my consumer, that digital gives me lots of options uh, that how I can do profiling of my consumer. Mm -hmm. If my consumer is on heavily on news, right? Uh, in news also that what kind of news he's watching and what is other lifestyle and all that, that thing that profiling I may not get on uh, TV and, and uh, print that I will get on digital in fact. Mm -hmm. So okay. all those factors are leading me that uh, depending upon the objective, Mm -hmm. That where I have to go, whether for news or uh, for on, only 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 news also, whether I have to go on TV or print or on digital in fact. These are the three, three main media in front of me in fact. Okay. But definitely the shift is happening more towards digital nowadays from the TV and the uh, print in fact. I think that that's why HD has launched Revamp their app, isn't it, Mitish? <laughs> no, absolutely. But you know, I just want to bring this point. You talked about fake news and you're absolutely right with the rising uncertainty. We have seen a significant rise in creation and distribution of fake news. You know, mm -hmm. with technology getting more sophisticated, is it is actually a cat and mouse game with fake news creators finding innovative ways to to stay ahead. Like technologies like deep fake are highly prevalent, and you know, it makes it difficult for cons uh, consumers 
to differentiate between real and fake information. So it is therefore important for consumers and brands to have the assurance that they can trust a platform distributing the news and information along, you know, with the news itself, uh, you know, uh, and, and again, remember that uh, for print, the medium is the message. So as brand leverage, the trusty, the trustworthy environment uh, of, uh, of some of the brands like Hindustan uh, to have a rub-off effect on the messaging itself. Uh, large brands actually turn to print, as Raj also said, to announce new launches and even call out uh, to the print medium to share the stories during times of crisis management. Right? We've seen several uh, brands lean towards print for crisis management. So Essentially, what we, we what we have actually uh, offered, and that's again the new launch talks about, is the whole word of Barosa, right? Which assures our partners that their message will be carried in a trustworthy and uh, uh, safe environment. Because we really hold ourselves to extremely high editorial standards, not just for now, but we've been doing it for almost hundred years through high quality standards of journalism, and we've realized that. Trust is a crying need uh, of the consumers and brands alike. So with our proposition, Barosa, Barosa Nai Hindustan, ka, we are once again reaching out with the promise of, of uh, trustworthy news to our, uh, to our consumers. And because we're discussing advantage and disadvantages, I think ROI is a very important factor for advertisers. Jay, I'd like to ask, touch upon this subject, data measurement in HSM markets, and especially via print and uh, digital. Uh, is, how is that working out? Uh, see, the, uh, one of one of the biggest challenges which we have uh, when it comes to this market is is uh, data, data and measurement. So uh, there is there there has been like quite some movement when we talk about the urban India, uh, mm -hmm. but when when we look at this, it, it becomes very challenging. Uh, and uh, you you need to you need to first, so what we've done actually at publicist group is that we've collated data from various sources. So you have the syndicated studies like IRS and, and uh, some data coming out of Bach, but uh, we've looked at census data, we've looked at data coming from Facebook, Google, Geo, then we've also had our own customized data. So uh, what, what happens is that it's, it's very challenging. And uh, this is something which I, which I tell my clients very often that, you know, planning for India is like, you know, making a media plan for Europe. Uh, you have so many dialects, you have so many states, et cetera, and it becomes very difficult. You cannot have a homogeneous kind of a plan. And therefore, uh, what you, what you need is is a lot of data. Currently, I think uh, uh, the the industry is highly highly focused towards urban, uh, and and most of the research work, most of the syndicated studies, is more towards uh, the urban India. Uh, but I I think uh, we probably we are slightly late on this one. But that's where uh, there has to be concentrated effort. To have more data coming out uh, for for these markets, because it's it's actually a, a media planner's nightmare. You know when he has to make the entire plan and and ensure that it's 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 catered uh, to to each of these specific markets. So yeah, that's 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 something uh, which which turns out to be a, a classic big challenge. When it comes to ROI, obviously uh, because of lack of data, uh, measurement becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and. and uh, it's, it's then forced to looking at the end result. And a and lot of times advertising cannot like lead to sales. You know, there are mm -hmm. other brand measures which, which we try and uh, sort of uh, cater to. So th these are some of the challenges which are there when it, when it uh, uh, happens. Uh, but as, as, as we've all started and we all know that it's the market, you know, so, so besides these restrictions, uh, the clients are willing to like, you know, invest in these markets. Uh, with with a much more robust mechanism, uh, it will further accelerate. Okay. In that case, let's ask the client on the panel. Uh, Rajiv, does it really interfere with uh, the allocation of budget for the HSM market, the ROI factor, and the data collection? You are very right. Uh, in fact, uh, the data is a really big problem, and it's very difficult to measure the ROI. In fact. Because Jay yeah, very rightly said that apart from sales, that uh, measurement uh, of uh, uh, parameter is also the brand building, that brand impacts and all that, right? Uh, it's, there are certain technologies available, but I will not say that they are the foolproof one, that mm -hmm. it's analysis and all that, which can give me slightly more uh, uh, picture, a better picture that whatever I'm investing, whether mm -hmm. it's giving me result or not, whether it's delivering, uh, whether it's giving me ROI or not, 
but they are so many uh, uh, hurdles so so many bottlenecks and all that so that's why it's very difficult to measure that whatever i'm investing in that how much roi i'm getting if in case if uh, my basic uh, objective is a sales at mm-hmm. least on d2c platform in the performance performance marketing it still i can do some little bit level of measurement that mm-hmm. how many impressions i am serving how many clicks i am getting how many conversion rate i am getting in what post and all that so it is still like i can get but otherwise uh, in the overall if i see the tv print digital outdoor and all that put together my all the investment that how much is leading to my sale how much is leading to my brand visibility my impact and all that is very different because there are so many factors playing uh, uh, a role uh, at a time like suppose i am running my campaign it's possible my competitor also ran some campaign it's possible my competitor gave some scheme it's possible there is some macro environment factor that some pandemic has come which has completely uh, eroded my bottom line top line and all everything and all that so, so there are so many factors that can you they may change it can you behavior also there may be uh, like during pandemic lots of new products came out which uh, no, nobody anticipated earlier in fact so many products they have to withdraw from the market which nobody anticipated so so many factors play an important role like uh, every point of time that's so why it's very difficult to measure that whatever investment i'm doing whether it's giving me roi or not but definitely mm-hmm. to some level we have been able to see the roi in uh, only in the digital space in the d2c platform that we are doing the performance marketing with the clear objective of sales only interesting very interesting now uh, uh, mitesh let me ask you now hd media as a brand is present in urban and rural markets you are available in hindi and english both uh, but till date i think hindi publications are the largest uh, volume contributors in print uh, that's that's right right yes So volume they, contributions yes yeah. right are these readers that we are talking about going to prefer downloading an english news app considering the aspirations are similar to those in urban areas or essentially they would prefer to read news in the language of their you know they are in hindi uh, the language that they speak at home I, why why do you think uh, whichever you would see the the beauty is that uh, you know we are not really restricted uh, uh, by the language because uh, given that it's a app in a digital economy it just transcends any uh, geographic uh, uh, geographic boundary so the same hd is available in everywhere right in whether it's lucknow or whether it's lakhimpur or whether it's bihar uh, and likewise hindustan is also available everywhere i think what is important is a the consumption in the language of choice and the language of choice is very uh, very often the language that you have uh, uh, you know uh, been accustomed to as you're growing up uh, so if you have gone through uh, a, a language school and you know as the schooling goes the way you also think right you normally think sometimes in your mother tongue uh, and maybe you may be speaking in english but you know instinctively mm-hmm. you may be thinking in your mother tongue uh and therefore the language is uh, uh and it it will it it will move and it will change depending upon how these trends move across right as as long as we see uh the primary uh, language of education remains hindi for that hindi heartland people think and are okay and communicate in hindi uh, i think it'll it be all fine what is important is actually translating some of the um uh some of the uh, words or some of the trends uh, to lo- local language and that essentially plays a very important role whether a, uh, whether as a reader uh, you know one is able to relate to what is being said um you, so you know it's simplification uh, of uh, of language so whether you, whether it is demonetization or a gst or any other stuff like that um uh, somebody has to Uh, you know i would say simplify uh, what is happening around and what these terms mean to me as long as uh, that is, that remains simple uh, and easy for me to understand and as long as uh, you know i'm comfortable with the language because i've grown up with that language it should be fine uh, right mm-hmm. and uh, and see i mean these trends will change we will see increasing uh, education in uh, in english that is a phenomena which is happening so over mm-hmm. a period of time it's not going to be immediate but over a time over a period of time it will it will be may or may not happen i don't know i mean i'm not a soothsayer but uh, as long as the fundamental uh, language of education remains uh, and the way we think 
and uh, express ourselves remain uh, the simplification remains language will always be accepted as a media of choice i i, I think i would just like to add on to what mitesh is saying is that uh, the 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 big thing about these markets is is the literacy levels so mm -hmm. while while literacy is on the rise but uh, it 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 continues to be a challenge and uh, there are there are two factors which are which are very important so one is vernacular so which mm -hmm. we spoke about communicating in their language and second is voice so there are there are now complete apps everything which is voice enabled so you mm -hmm. don't have to type you don't have to do anything and that's gaining a huge momentum mm -hmm. uh, so you're not you're not asking the person to read or write he can speak and therefore you know to communicate and do everything uh, which is voice enabled and that's mm -hmm. that's been the biggest rise which we've seen in these markets okay you know because you spoke about literacy and i think yeah it is a big challenge in um in a way i don't know i'm just playing the devil's advocate here uh when tv was coming up uh, it was a big threat for radio similarly i mean an, a big uh, medium a platform which has become uh, very appealing for the hsm audience is short form video apps so uh, you know what what is that edge that an hd would provide which a short form uh, video app cannot you know what is a kind of profile that you can basically help your advertisers uh, reach out to uh, which those apps might not be able yeah i think again um, uh, neither we are not really into a user generated content um, and uh, as i would uh, like to put out saying that look uh, the integrity the trust of the news that we put out is is very important for us and therefore that uh, uh, while we what, what we doing we are essentially learning and adapting from the behavior and the product itself so when we talk about stories or the way uh, you know reels for example are being consumed uh, you are essentially looking at a swipe up swipe up kind of a up and up kind of a uh, user behavior on the platform right so we have adopted that uh, so you see in in the apps you also have story formats uh, which are quick reads etc which you know which you can actually swipe up uh, snackable content etc or reliance on video which is you know short uh, 15 seconders and and short video clips to to summarize the news so we've adopted those uh, but as far as ugc is concerned uh, you know there is always on uh, an arc of uh, being a moderated news uh, a trustworthy source um, which is something that uh, you know the brand may not compromise on uh, so that's that's very core and important to us So you kind of tried to balance the best of both worlds while yes. keeping my integrity alive. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and my last question is to both of you, uh, Jay and Rajiv. Uh, the next hundred million consumers will pro most probably uh, be found in these markets. Do you agree? And uh, what are the various ways brand must, brands must reach out to them to ensure that you know, they get the maximum benefit? Rajiv, you can go first. For one, definitely, I agree that right. See, India's population right now is seventy percent rural, roughly, and thirty percent urban. Mm -hmm. Whereas, in terms of, if I talk in more in terms of SMCG industry, there is sixty percent urban and forty percent rural. Okay. So that means the population-wise, the uh, rural contributes seventy percent, and the industry-wise, it contributes forty percent. So there mm -hmm. definitely there is a gap. and as i earlier said that uh, there are three four factors which is playing important role uh, in the growth in rural area one is in terms of digitization number two the exposure to more and more ott and uh, other kind of platform as rising inspiration level aspiration level rising disposable incomes and all that so growth definitely will happen and uh, so a lot many consumers are going to be added and more and more companies are reaching to rural, rural area with the newer products of and customized uh, to the rural impact so uh what as a marketer uh, the uh, most important challenge but i feel making the product available in the rural areas in fact distribution as i earlier said that uh, the cost of distribution is not so cheap in the rural area because in the rural area that in one rural there will be population of 5 to 10000 15000 20000 20, it also depends that various fmc companies they are dividing they are categorizing the rural area in the different ways somebody coin it as a below 50000 is everything rural somebody say go as per the census of india 
definition of rural only impaired somebody who was 25000 below and is all the rural and all that whatever the definition is that's not so important is the, the important factor is that cost of uh, uh, distribution in the rural area is not so cheap in fact okay so the first and foremost thing is that how to make the product available in the rural area in fact and for that uh, uh, various options are being evaluated by the different uh, companies some of them have their their own network somebody are to, tying up with the other companies and all that and they, that that's the number one number two that uh, trust margin the product as per the rural uh, needs and the wants aspiration level their lifestyle their behavior their culture everything and all that number three that making the product uh, available at the affordable price uh, as per the income of the rural area number 4 definitely the communication is very very important how to customize your communication uh, as per the uh, uh, understanding level of the role area uh, through which they can relate with the brand they they they, they can think is my brand i can buy this in fact so there are few of these factors which will be a very important role here for any marketer yes jay your turn <laughs> no oh, i i i definitely like you know sort of my echo my thoughts with with rajiv ji uh, it's it, probably not 100 million probably 300 400 million is going to come from there uh, yeah. urban urban is going to become more as a fight for market share uh, you know and 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 commerce is is going to be play a very important role in that but when it comes to rural it's about getting new consumers uh, so so that's where the entire potential lies again 70% of india is rural and and you know we we have not even scratched the surface uh next 10 years 15 years i think it's it's going to be a very important phase in how much we can like you know sort of dwell deeper into this and and extract out of the market um i i i again i think rajiv ji has covered it well that you know it's 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 all about like understanding the consumer uh, keeping the consumer at the center uh, which is which is i'm saying the basics of any marketing that uh, if if we were to reach out to them we'll have to look at the consumer and then plan everything around uh, again the consumer is ready so it's it's not that you know earlier again we were thinking will he will he shampoo his hair will he have biscuits all that is happening in these these markets uh, but but uh, it's it's as i said there is a huge level of uh, duplicates uh, which is which is which is being consumed and and that, therein lies the opportunity you know to get the real brands in uh to happen mm-hmm. to this consumer very very well valid point there uh, if i may summarize the discussion uh, around 15% of india's population resides in the hsm or the hindi speaking markets this hindi belt is uh, clearly the new epicenter of india's rapidly growing consumption story whether they will clearly lead the growth and steal a march away from the saturated metro cities i think only time will tell but the question is if it really happens are the marketers going to be prepared for it so leaving you on that thought and thank you so much to the panelists for this wonderful wonderful discussion thank you so you. much everyone really enjoyed the conversation same order same order thanks a lot thanks a lot it was great thank you thank you so much thank you